What's up everybody? It's Jen Brown. Welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. This is probably uh, the most random video I have and possibly will ever make. Um, if you happen to see my I'm not my illness get to know me video, which I'll stick there, I think. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, I mentioned that I collect scissors. I've been really interested in them kind of forever. Um, that was always one of my favorite school supplies to get to buy going back to school was picking out the scissors. Um, okay, so let's just pause there for a second. There's a couple things I think you need to understand. So my love of scissors doesn't just extend to antique ones, it runs deep. I have all kinds of jewelry and accessories that look like scissors. I've been known to make artwork out of scissors. There's also that time that I made a ball gown out of scissors. This passion runs deep, okay? <laughs> so now that we understand that, let's go really quickly just into the history of scissors. Scissors were actually invented by the ancient Egyptians. The first known pair is from about 1500 BCE. They would have looked like this. This pair was actually found in Turkey. They're just styled to look like ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, but this is kind of what these shears would have looked like. We honestly didn't see change in scissors until 100 CE when the Romans invented pivoted scissors like we have today. They would have looked something like this. That technology has basically stayed the same. It wasn't until the 1700s when a guy named Robert Hinchliffe started manufacturing scissors out of steel and making them a household object. Part of the reason why I love scissors so much is I think it's something that everybody still uses, but it's something we take for granted. The, the technology behind them is so simple and it's something that we have not changed for hundreds of years. They're so simplistic, but the movement is really sort of smooth and beautiful and I just think they're really cool and interesting. This is my thing that I collect. Some people like stamps, some people like cars. I like to collect scissors. Okay, so now that we've got that all clear, we can continue. Let's go. Um, I just wanted to, mostly for me, um, but in case anybody else out there collect scissors or love scissors, um, maybe you would find this interesting and I can share my collection with you and I hope it makes you happy because it made me really happy to film it. So I will go ahead and roll the footage of the scissors. So I do have some pairs um, that are not vintage or antique. I also just kind of collect novelty scissors if I think they're cool. I think I bought these at Michael's one year, but I just liked um, that they're not metal at all. They're just kid safety scissors that are plastic. Um, I had never seen that before. Since then, I've seen that that's like a really normal thing. Uh, so these are not a big deal at all, but I just thought they were cool and I liked the color, so I grabbed those. Going along with that, I also have a set of medical grade forceps that somebody gave me. Um, they're, again, these are not anything incredibly special or, well, not special, they're special to me, but anything incredibly rare. These are just, they're new, uh, they were not used or surgeries or on anyone. <laughs> they were given to me in a package, um, but I just, I like the shape of all types of scissors. And so having these forceps was pretty cool and they're really fun to just unlatch and latch them. If you can't sit, oh, that's a fun noise. <laughs> if you have tr troubles um, sitting still, those are fun to play with.
Oh, and I did not mention um, if anyone cares. I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up, but these are Vanderbilt forceps. So these two, these are our first kind of like rare or vintage scissors. I believe they're made by the same company. I've run into the problem of these really small embroidery scissors are so small that they um, a lot of times don't have anything on them, but these handles are basically the same exact pattern. So I'm guessing, I don't think this brand um, is especially like rare, like that they would have knockoffs of it, but um, these are the same. So they're either the same brand or this one was just a knockoff of it. These are Eversharp Forged Steel. These, I and I will repeat this over and over again, um, it was actually really hard to look up a lot of these brands because even if you can find out about them, some of them still operate today. So it's hard to find people that can just tell you the date of a pair of scissors. Um, I did find a couple of like pretty special ones that I'm excited about that I'll show you as we get further in. But these Eversharp scissors, um, they're kind of like Art Deco style. I, the best I could find online was like an estimate that these would be like 1930s, 1940s, but that's the logo. I did read, um, somebody said that if you search like the brand's logo, that if they've changed it throughout the years, you could tell, but I could not find anything about how old this Eversharp logo is. So my guess based on what I read would be like 1930s, 1940s. These, I think, are really cool. Um, this, I, let me see, where is the wording even at? It's a very hard to make out. That's a picture of a barrel. Can I point with some of these other ones? This is a picture of a barrel right here. And this, I could not read, but I actually found a website where people, it's like Collectors Weekly, I think is a magazine. And on their website, um, I found a page where people had posted a bunch of pictures of scissors and they were sharing information about them and telling people like what they were from, which was really cool. This is a picture of the Capitol in DC, the Capitol building. And that's the White House. And they open and shut like this. Um, this style of scissors, this almost kind of like a heart shape. I actually saw a bunch of pairs that had monuments on them from the World's Fair, which was early 1900s. This pair though, um, from what I found, saw of other people's pictures of that same barrel and the words, this is from Magnetic Cutlery Co. Um, the information I found said that they're probably sewing or barber scissors and they're guessing early 1900s just based on the fact that this same exact style with different monuments um, were from the World's Fair. Here we've got an interesting pair. Um, I still count these as scissors even though they are not. Um, this is a wick trimmer or a candle snuffer. So you would go over to your candle. They sit on these three legs. And then you would snuff out your candle. Um, it actually like trims the tip of the wick off. I did a bunch of research on this. Um, I couldn't find this exact pair. I found a lot that had this sort of flower detail here. From what I 
bread or saw, you, it's hard to trust because some people will just label things like, oh, Victorian era, this or that, and you don't actually know if it's that old. Um, so I saw a lot of these with this detail labeled Victorian era. The one I found that looked the closest to this was labeled as colonial. So these may be from the 1800s. Um, not really sure. They don't have any markings on them as far as a manufacturer or seller or anything like that. So, I mean, I can just, you can tell they're old, but I'm not sure exactly how old they are when these kind of fell out of use. This pair is another one. I couldn't really find anything about where it's from or how old it is. This style of folding scissors is pretty common. These are still really easy to buy. They have some sort of markings on them. I'm not sure which way is up. It's the same on both sides. I don't own a magnifying glass, um, but I even looking at them now, really zoomed in on my camera. I don't know what that says. I couldn't make it out. Um, this chain doesn't really have any information on it either. My guess is that these are like Taylor scissors and it has the little chain and the clip on them so you could keep them in your pocket. Just a few left here. We've got this pair. which is from H. Boker, I think is how you say that. Um, when I looked it up, this is a German company. I think the O usually has like the umlauts over it. Um, so it might be like Boker. This was the most recent pair. I got as far as antique scissors go. Um, I don't honestly get them super often. I look at them quite a bit, but I usually get outbid as far as auctions go on eBay. But every once in a while, I get a cool pair. These, it was a little bit hard to make out. Um, that says Ubellini um, in Flo Florence. I think it's Yugo, is how you say the first name. Um, this was, these were fun to research. Um, I have seen that Bellini has made scissors and um, like a lot of really these sort of like fancy ornate like serving tongs and things for quite a while, but all, I couldn't find any of the pairs of actual scissors online. All I could find was serving tongs. Um, but they were done in the same style and those were all from anywhere from like 1930s to 60s is what people were saying about them. So I don't know exactly where in there these fall or if they're even older than that, but my guess for these would be somewhere between 1930s and 1960s, but they were made in Italy, which is pretty cool.
All right, this pair is pretty interesting. We're gonna note right now that that says Germany. Over here, I just bought these because I thought the handle was really pretty. This says F and B. Now when I researched this, that stands for Foster and Bailey, which they're like a really, really old scissor manufacturer, um, which did not operate for very long. So that would make these sterling silver and from the 1880s, which I'm not saying they're not, but um, I double checked. Silver is not supposed to be magnetic. Um, these are magnetic. The blade says Germany on them. I have seen this handle style a bunch, um, similar to this first pair. That, that I've seen this handle pattern of scissors all over the place. Same with these, you can actually still buy new, like made to look antique scissors that look like this. So I honestly think these are like a replica of some Foster and Bailey scissors. All right, so these by far um, is probably one of the coolest pairs. Um, I thought they were neat, that's why I bought them. These I think were one of the kind of like early on pair of antique scissors that I bought, so I don't remember how much I paid for them, but again, I'm sure it wasn't very much. These were actually pretty easy to research. Uh, once I found, I actually found this website that has a list of focus, silver stamps and what they mean, like where, what that company is and when they manufactured it. Um, this was a little bit hard to read. So this first one is WH and SB. And then I could not for the life of me figure out what that last symbol is. So the side I found um, had the WH and SB. There's other things like a P there instead um, that all mean different things, but I couldn't find specifically the SB and then the symbol. Um, but these are real, I believe. Um, they're tarnished like silver. So these are grape scissors. That's why they're not, I mean, I guess they're kind of sharp, but they're not like blade scissors. They're grape scissors. But these are William Hutton and Sheffield London is what that stands for. If it's just the H alone, then it's William Hutton and Sons. Um, but the SB, I think, is supposed to be for Sheffield London. These are from like the 1850s. So that was really exciting for me when I found this out that these are actually really old and I don't know if they're valuable. I doubt there's really a huge market for antique scissors, but I think they're really cool. Ta-da! Okay, so I actually filmed um, the scissor collection you just saw a week or so ago. And while I was doing that research, I came across a pair that I have been searching for forever. Um, I, I can't, like, I, it just came in the mail. I kind of can't contain my excitement. Um, but I also got, I'll show you in a sec, but I also got um, this book called American Scissors and Shears from eBay, which I thought was really cool. It had um, not great reviews on Amazon, um, just cause it's old. Like this copy is not from the 1940s, it's a reprint, but this book is like from the 1940s, but it has all these really cool pictures and it's all about um, like different cutlery companies. Some of them make like knives and other things too from New England. Um, and I actually, I wanted it just to have, and I thought the pictures were cool and all the diagrams and stuff, but, um, I think this will actually be kind of helpful when I am looking online for 
vintage scissors and stuff and just knowing like there's some of the knives but like different brands and their logos and all that kind of stuff so this was a really cool find okay are you ready da, 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 da. Ah, these they're they're a little scary i'm usually um not scared of them but they're sharp enough to cut paper um these are ceremony scissors so they're they're like real um real metal and meant to cut ceremonial ribbon but they're 25 inch scissors um i found them on amazon while i was doing it was like a link to them um while i was doing research and um, I'm not really sure why I got this lucky because these are usually really expensive. These were $30. I'm so happy. <laughs> I ordered these like the day after I filmed the rest of that clip and I was like, I have to wait until these come in the mail so I can include these in my scissor collection. Um, these are officially <laughs> my favorite pair. Honestly, they feel like a sword. I feel like I need a sheath for them so I can like, whoosh. They're definitely like, that's a, ooh, that's a good noise. Uh, all right, I'm having way too much fun. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Uh, this one's definitely for me, but that's okay. I think they all should be anyway. Um, but thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.